when I was a very little child, I, I used to play, uh, I, I used to spend many hours in front of a piano. But not to play uh, Mozart or Chopin, but to explore fascinating sounds by combining different keys and pedals spontaneously or at random. The sound was sometimes peaceful and sometimes violent and sometimes solid and sometimes soft, moving, my, uh, moving me so deeply. But apparently, it, it was nothing but a noise to others. For example, my mother often said, uh, play music instead of such a mess. So I wondered, do others feel the same as I do? And years later, I became a hearing scientist. And my answer to this question now is no. The perception can be quite different across people. So to convince you, I'm going to make some dem demonstration. So now I will play a oh, Japanese word, clearly spoken Japanese word, banana, banana. Okay? Banana. Okay? Banana. Now that same word is repeated over and over. So listen carefully, because you may experience something strange. Okay? Oh. So do you hear any, any changes? So anyone? <laughs> uh, so what, what did you hear? Ban 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 yeah, ban is a quite common form. Uh, in, in my case, something like, so banana is turned into banan, then namba, followed by nampa, and nappa, and banana again, and the voice split into two parts, one saying papa and the other saying banana, and wawa, and so on. So I would keep, you know, listening to this, this sound for hours if time permits. Yeah, it, it's more interesting to me than just boring music. But some others would say, yeah, yeah uh, this is just boring, because I, I, I don't experience any changes. Yeah, so, um, yeah, this, um, but what makes that kind of difference? So we listen to the, uh, what, what, uh, we perceive sounds not by ears, by, but by brain. The anatomy of the brain can be quite different across people. So the shapes and size of each uh, brain area is very different, and also connection among different sides also different. Second, the brain functions are modulated or controlled by neuromodulators such as uh, dopamine or serotonin and, uh, and things like that. And the balance and the effectiveness of such neuromodulators also depend on individuals. And third, and more importantly, the brain is plastic. In other words, the brain changes according to experiences. So several years ago, we examined the brain activity related to the illusory changes using functional MRI. So, so shown in red are the new uh, brain sites that, uh, act that are or activated at the timing of illusory changes. Okay? Of special interest here is the broca's area here. Uh, which has been known as a center for speech production. We found that the activity, the higher the activity here, the more, more changes the listener experiences. It seems like this area acts as a 
Accel accelerator, accelerator for perceptual switching. On the other hand, this area, anterior cingulate cortex, is acting like a break to per perceptual switching. So the number of per illusory uh, switches is negatively correlated with the activity of the anterior cingulate cortex. So the balance between two sides seem to determine the, the individual tendency of perception. And it's, it would not be appropriate to say which is better, because both has merits. In, in daily life, uh, some, uh, when someone is given uh, many options, someone uh, try to explore different options, different uh, alternatives, but some others may stick to one. So both seems to be good. So um, the having this, the, the, those different kinds of people would uh, maximize the uh, probability or chance for the survival as a group. Okay. Now. But th that kind of uh, diversity of perception can be troublesome in daily life, in some situation. What we, uh, uh, sorry, um, the behavior or decision critically depends on the perception. Or that is how we grasp the world. The perception is so automatic and compelling that we cannot uh, notice that there, uh, the dif uh, there is a difference among people and believes that the, the perception is the world itself. But it's not true. It's only a limited uh, image of a quite complicated world. For example, some, some people may see a vase, vase here and want to buy one. But some others may see the two people facing with, with the other. So this ki kind of difference sometimes causes troubles. For example, the people like uh, people with developmental uh, disorders live in quite unique perceptual world. And the gap between the people are not obvious. So I guess the first step to mutual understanding is to notice the gap of perception. But, it, oh, sorry. but is there any way to bridge the gap? The one solution would be mind reading, so-called mind reading. That is a technology to decode the mental state or perception or emotion by outwardly observable physiological responses. For example, the pupil. The primary role of the pupil is to control the amount of light coming into the eye. But also, the pupil is the window of the mind. The key structure here is the locus querulus. Uh, which is in the brainstem, deep inside the brain. So when a salient stimulus, uh, the information about salient stimulus arrive at locus coelius, then it releases neuroadrenaline to different targets in the brain, including the prefrontal cortex, which controls cognitive functions such as uh, directing attention to a certain target or switching attention to the other. But at the same time, the noradrenaline noro controls the size of the pupil. Then th there is a correlation between changes in pupil size and the level of noradrenaline in the brain and the cognitive functions. You may have heard or you may have uh, read uh, from the you know, popular psychology book saying that uh, 
if uh, someone likes you, the person's pupil would be get larger, and uh, if someone don't like you, the pupil would get smaller. Actually, unfortunately, the things are not that simple. So there are many factors for, uh, affecting the uh, pupil size. So we need some sophisticated uh, method to separate those factors. But anyway, so here is an example. So this graph shows the pupil size change during listening to uh, music. So remember, there is no change in light. So the pu pupil size change only is only elicited by the sound. And the colored areas indicate the, the period where the, the listener is attracted by the music. And, and, and in this uh, figure, we can compare the difference of two people's response to the same music. Okay? The, the, the upper one is music, and the, the second one, the response of, of pupil size or response of listener A and listener B. And as you may notice, there are some commonalities. So some peaks correspond to the, the timing where a new musical structure has been introduced. But you may also notice the difference, oh, sorry, difference between these two listeners. So the way people grasp the music may depend on the individual. So some, uh, the and the units of uh, perception, phrases, and so on. So, uh, in some near future, we may be able to elucidate the commonality and difference of the people's perception and emotion in real time. However, one may notice, uh, what one, one may imagine, or uh, one may uh, be suspicious about that notion because uh, one may wonder if it's totally possible at all to communicate across the people having completely different perceptual worlds. Indeed, the conventional theories about communication implicitly assume that, uh, that everyone is the same in terms of the hardware and software and the belief about the world. But apparently, it's not no longer appropriate. So we are now at the point where we, we, we think about the communication. So my idea is something like this. So here we have two individuals, A and B, and each has different beliefs about the world, the belief A and B. And, uh, and the belief is, by the way, continuously updated by the experience, okay? And with some interaction between two individuals, the after that interaction, the, each belief may be changed to some extent, okay? The difference of um, the posterior belief from the prior belief corresponds to surprise. And surprise may give you re reward or pleasure. So it, it's, it can be a motivation for further interaction. Then get, you can be, get a little bit smarter, more adaptable, adaptable to the world. Okay, so now, uh, in conclusion, so what I want to say now is mind the gap and interact with each other. And resulting surprise will be its own mirror. Okay? And I hope my talk will give you a little bit of surprise. Okay, thank you very much.